Thanks, everyone. So uh, when I did this practice, I was right up against the 10-minute mark, so I'm going to try and speed through this. Um, my talk is, what's in a hash? Would a gradual rollout by any other hashing algorithm still smell as sweet? And yes, it's a Shakespeare reference. So first off, I'm CM Griffin on all socials. I stream on Twitch like five days a week. I'm a developer advocate at Git Kraken, and it's my first time in this role. I've been a software dev for about 10 years. And I'm a snowboarder. At any given moment, I'd probably rather be snowboarding. So basically, uh, this talk came about because I made my own feature flagging tool. It's a bad idea. You probably shouldn't do it. But I did anyway, because it's good stream content. Uh, it's static file based, it's Git native, like a GitOps approach, and it wasn't something that other people were doing. I didn't know about GrowthBook until just last year. I probably would have just used GrowthBook. But what is a gradual release? It's basically the building block to an A-B test. You're going to roll something out to a percentage of your users, and you want that to be a consistent rollout so that you can have the same check done on your server and on your client, and you're getting the same consistent set of users. You can add a seed to maybe get a different set of users, but you need to be consistent with that. So basically, you know, building block to A-B testing, similar to maybe canary releases or blue-green deployments, but feature flags for a gradual release need to be done at runtime, not build time. That's how you can change these things on the fly, nice and quick, and actually be able to turn off a feature that's maybe costing you money. So why a custom algorithm? I wrote my own custom algorithm for this. I wanted it to be portable because I wrote SDKs in 10 languages, because it's just good stream content. Um, and I was wondering, well, maybe performance, because cryptographic hashes are actually meant to be slow for password hashing and things like that. I wanted something fast because your feature flag check could be on a hot path. So how my original algorithm worked, very naive. I just took the user ID, right, the string, broke it into characters, added them up, multiplied them by some magic numbers, in this case, 42, and then hashed it or moduloed it into a number between 0 and 100. And, or actually, this then becomes a value between 0 and 1, but same thing. There's also some other hashing algorithms that I decided to test and run against. This one's called Graham Hash, not Graham from GrowthBook. This is Graham, a viewer from my stream. And I believe he got this from like the Minecraft like world seeding hashing algorithm. So it's got a, a few magic numbers in there. Those magic numbers date back like 40 years. So there's nothing proprietary about what Minecraft is doing with this. But uh, you know, it was just worth testing out and seeing how it worked. Another one that's very popular is FNV1A. This is something that GrowthBook uses as well. And the algorithm is still very simple. But again, what you're going to see in a lot of these hashing algorithms is the use of magic numbers. Uh, and here we see a prime value and an offset basis, which is kind of like where the number starts incrementing and adding. And then finally, someone told me about this thing called DJB2. Um, I had never heard about it before, but I figured I'd check it out. And what you're going to see is that a lot of these are just taking a value, splitting it, and then adding up to a number and multiplying and doing some magic. I also then took all of the Node.js native algorithms in the crypto library and just ran them and created just a giant CSV value set of all the results of how long it took, how evenly distributed these things are. And basically, right, I wanted to see how fast were they, because that's important, but also how even is the distribution across like the entire 0 to 100 spread, right? You got to make sure that you're not having a bias towards a certain amount. So first off, here's a graph. This is the speed iteration. You know, of 1,000 iterations, I got rid of some of the outliers. And we see that my custom algorithm actually still has way worse like speed profile. So my original assumption, totally wrong. Uh, it's really fast when it's fast, but then it's also really slow when it's slow. Uh, when we look and see maybe GB32, that's GrowthBook's 32-bit uh, version. They also have a 64-bit version. FNV1A in my implementation is actually slower than those. So some interesting stuff. But what we see is that the naive, like, non-cryptographic hashing algorithms are still much faster than things like MD5 or SSL MD5, like all that stuff. Uh, and basically, yes, I ran against 50 to 60 of these algorithms. And what we're seeing are really just like the top 10. 
So now when we consider the distribution, I'm running this on a string ID, and we can see that growth books, uh, the hybrid one is something that I ended up doing later that I'll tell you a little bit about. But um, right, my custom one actually has a great distribution, even though it's not quite as fast. We can see that the Minecraft uh, hashing algorithm has a decent distribution, but this is only for 100 iterations. So you're not going to get a perfect distribution. As the numbers go up, you'll get you know, those numbers to solidify and be a little more predictable. As we can see here, you know, they all kind of coalesce into these values. But what we're looking for is a perfect blue bar there that's at 25% and 75% and then the middle line value right there at 50. And we can see that GB32 hybrid there, my custom one, and some of these others perform admirably well. But not all of your IDs or you know, things that you're going to want to be hashing and distributing for are going to be strings. And when we look at numbers, we see some very different things happening. So my custom one definitely has a bias towards the upper end. The Gram hash, the Minecraft algorithm, definitely not something you want to use for numeric IDs. So I threw that one out. DJB2 definitely wasn't good either. Um, and yeah, like we're basically just trying to hash for a good distribution, but also still sorting by speed because we want it to still be fast. So again, we go to 1,000 iterations. And the Gram one at 1,000 iterations actually ends up being fast, but a terrible distribution. So there was a bit of a hiccup, and this is a little cut off. That's my mistake. Uh, I thought I had these images sides just right, but oh well. Uh, but basically, in JavaScript, when bitwise operations are done, it's going to convert to a 32-bit number and then back uh, do the bitwise operation and then convert back to 64-bit. So I was actually having inconsistent like hash values from the JavaScript on the client, maybe, and the Go code on the server. So because of that, there's like some little magic. And really, GrowthBook didn't have this problem, so I had to look at what they were doing. Basically, what was happening in the old one is when the bitwise operation was happening, converting it to 32-bit, it was truncating the value because they were multiplying by a very large uh, uh, basis number or prime number. Here in the growth book algorithm, they're doing some other bitwise magic, and I don't understand it myself at all, but it does work. So that's pretty cool. And really, I ended up basically using growth books algorithm because it's MIT licensed. You know, I definitely shout out the license and all that. Uh, but they are using a numeric seed value, and I'm using, or sorry, they're using a string seed value, and I ended up using a numeric seed value, just a value between zero and one. So I ended up needing to like modify theirs just a bit. And what you can see is in their algorithm, they're doing the seed plus the value as just strings, and instead I'm doing the hash times my seed value. Value. And that's, you know, basically the talk. Whew. Okay, I rushed through that way quicker than I had planned. Um, but are there any questions? Wow. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Wow. That was way quicker than I had done before. No, that was great, Chris. Um, yeah, so are there any questions about this out in the audience? Graham, do you want to throw any questions out there around your, or, or any uh, additional context around your hashing algorithms? <laughs> awesome. There we I go. think that means I did my job. Uh, amazing. So, Chris, you beat your time by two minutes. I feel like our lightning talk speakers have definitely like took that lightning talk challenge and definitely met it and delivered so much amazing information. Um, so, can we please give one massive round of applause again for Chris Griffin, everybody? <laughs> amazing. Thank